Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. Today I want to show you a couple images, couple assets that I've created for myself while working on the big e-commerce project that we've looked at last time. These images made my life much easier, made the whole project go much smoother and in general just made my life as a front-end developer much, 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 much more easier. So if you're struggling to stay organized on a bigger projects or while creating more advanced UI animations and transitions, keep watching. And now let's have a look at the assets. Alrighty, so last time we spoke about the layout, how we've created the grid on this new course.com.au and we deconstructed some of the CSS animations like navigating through the categories and we looked at the Fed controller, how that works. And today I wanted to show you little tools I've used along the way and what helped me to stay on top of all the workload and keep everything nicely organized. So hopefully this will help you if you ever work on a big project like this. We will look at a few things. We'll start the navigation. Then we'll look at again at the Fed controller and how I kept organized the classes on that one. Then we look at the models, which I don't have on the screenshot. Then we we'll look at the tabs, tiles, the tiles themselves. So the whole tiles, the different styles and how I kept that organized. And then we'll look at Z index because that was very, very important keeping track of all the elements and the individual Z indexes. Now I will show you a couple of the assets that I've used to stay on track and stay organized while working on this massive project. Okay, so if you started on something from scratch, you might feel overwhelmed after a while. And the key thing is to break everything into small bits and pieces. I'm a visual person and I like to have everything broken down into images. So I created these assets for myself just to keep on track, just to make sure I know what I'm coding and don't feel overwhelmed. So breaking it down into these simple screenshots helps me to write the CSS for something more complex and also helps me to hand over these to a developer to the backend developer or someone who might implement the angular or the react on these components and this was really really useful for for that handover as well okay so what i've got here is a category navigation the categories of the products and how we drilling down into the level two three and four and what sort of classes we applying to okay so very important to stay on track and then very very handy when you're handing it over to a developer another very very complex and quite challenging element on the side was the fed controller and i took exactly the same approach and created this asset just for myself so i know exactly which class to apply at which scenario and this definitely saved me a lot of time and headaches. And here I'm including all the classes that are necessary to add and change the styles of the Fed controller when we're adding things to a trolley, when we want to show the preloader and when it fades out first and then shows the price. So these steps was like one, two and three and then the same thing happening when we removing okay so one two and three just to make sure i know what's happening i've also included the classes here and again this helps a lot with the writing the css some of these styles actually changed since i've worked on it initially but the whole framework for the fed controller actually stays the same okay so i think at the at the end we we change this to underline but in general, this asset definitely helped me with the handover. Next up are the modal windows, the models, the pop-ups that we call them pop-ups inside of the application, models. And again, I'm trying to include the class here. 
So I can hand it over simply to the Angular developer who just needs to simply add these classes once it's implemented. Okay, there's two versions. One is when it's locked, when you're trying to add the specific number of products into the trolley, and one is unlocked, and that's when the style's changing to this yellow style. Okay, so we've got two versions, and I wanted to simply, in this one screenshot, communicate to the backend developer which classes to add to the model so it changes the styles. Now let's have a look at the tabs. They also had to be flexible, multiple number of tabs, and they had to work with the number of products in each category without it as well, with five or six or three numbers. So I had to really work out how to make these tabs as flexible as possible. They also had to include an icon and be closable. And here are all the classes that make this all possible. The following asset helped me to stay on top of all the Promotiles styles. As you can see, there is a default styles for the Promotile, then a new tile, everyday flybys specials. So all these classes just helped me to visualize what needs to change. And again, this was very useful when handing it over to the guys who were implementing it. I think this screenshot is from early stages of the project. Some of the styles might apply to different categories. Some of them are not used at all, but you get the point how this was useful. The other challenging aspect on the whole project was to keep the Z indexes under control and make sure that things always appear behind or on top of things. And what I did here, I just grouped few elements into the initial Z index one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So these were the, this is the group number one. So these are the elements always sitting at the bottom of the stack. Then we have something called the mid range. So this is the second group. Here I've started with 100 and slowly work my way down to 95. So if anything had to slot between these two groups, we could easily add 94 and so on. And in the same fashion, we could start adding elements on top of it. Then the pop-ups, they had to be on top of everything else, which is another group starting from 150 and growing the other way. Again, if we needed to slot something in between, we could easily find a number between 101 and 150. Okay, so this is the third group. And to make it even more organized, I've added these colors to make sure I know which elements fall into which, which category. Productile is the green and the models are the green too. And that's it all for today. One more thing before I go actually, and that is the Trello board I've used. As you can see, I've got a couple columns here before coding. Then I was logging the bugs here, components, what I'm working on now and what is completed. Okay, so this is just for myself. I only shared this with a couple designers and developers. This wasn't the whole project team on it. So if you're struggling to stay organized on your front end project, definitely use a Trello board, put a couple columns, what are you working on now, what's coming next. And in the components, I broke down each of the templates into small bits and pieces, took a screenshot, added a checklist of things I need to do for that component. And while I was working on it, I moved it to the doing column. And when it was done, it went to the done column. Very straightforward. But having a system like this, like a Trello board or piece of paper, I actually prefer Trello board because it makes you look more professional. I hope you found this useful. And if you did, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this from the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. Until next time, happy coding. Bye.